Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, want to kill that cable bill? How about getting a Netmaster? You can watch live TV, pay-per-view, premium content like HBO and Stars, all of the sports channels like NBA League Pass, NFL Red Zone, and every movie ever made. Pay for the box once, no monthly fees ever. For more information, contact Dean 13 Media at 609-807-1175. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is April 16, 2018. It's the sixth man, Dean Geronimo, and I'm here at the Voice of the People with Mark Lee. Mark, how'd your weekend go, bro? It was a good weekend. You know, the weather was a little bit on the uh, topsy-turvy side here in Durham, North Carolina. So, you know, we had a little bit of uh, wind and rain, and it even got a little chilly yesterday and a little bit chilly today, and I think it's supposed to be even chillier the this evening and into tomorrow. I think they're even talking about like some possible frost warnings on the middle of April. We're in the middle of spring and they're talking frost warnings like that makes any sense whatsoever. But hey, that's the way it goes. And then we had some events over at the Haiti Heritage Center. You know, this was World Voice Day, so we had a uh, young lady came in and uh, gave a presentation and uh, gave several workshops and things that was affiliated with Duke University. So there were quite a few uh, vocalists out there, and they gave a spectacular performance. So uh, definitely was good to see some of the uh, fine vocalists from uh, North Carolina Central University get a chance to perform with this uh, young lady who is a uh, acclaimed uh, performer in her own right. Uh, I believe she's actually a professor in the uh, Princeton area. So uh, it was definitely good having her in town to give her presentation. So it has definitely been a uh, good weekend, and then, you know, like I said, it's uh, starting off on uh, the good side here as well. As a matter of fact, I was just looking up the gentleman, the lady's name, Dr. Trinice Robinson and Martin. That's who was given the workshop as part of the 12th Annual World Voice Day Celebration. So that was going on at Haiti on both uh, Friday and Saturday during the day, and they had all kinds of interesting workshops and things that were part of what they had happening at this event, so I didn't see anybody that did not seem like they were not enjoying themselves at the event, so I think they got a whole lot of very valuable information. As a matter of fact, one of the workshops was called Understanding Your Body, Voice Anatomy, and How the Voice Works, and they had one on vocal health techniques to prevent voice problems and real-time strategies for vocal wellness, nourishing the soul sound and maximizing your vocal training time, as well as um, they had some uh, different other workshops going on as well. So they had vocal warm-ups. They had uh, hearing health on stage, hearing health on stage and off. So a lot of uh, people connected with Duke were part of this great event. And then they had, um, like I said, Dr. Janice Robertson Martin was the uh, main vocalist that was there, and she's got a very rich history. And I'm actually talking to her about being on the show in the near future says that an accomplished performer, teacher, and scholar, Dr. Janice Robinson Martin, has enlightened students from around the world on a variety of soul ingredient topics, performing and lecturing at national and international levels. And she's performed with all kinds of groups, everything ranging from Latin music ensembles to corporate bands to R&B groups. As a fact, she was part of the R&B recording group Change, and she was also part of Standing in the Shadows of Motown Live. So she's definitely got a rich history. It says, based on her graduate research, Dr. Trinice uh, created Soul Ingredients, a teaching methodology for development of singers' musical style, interpretations in African-American folk-based music styles, i.e. jazz, gospel, R&B, blues. And this methodology shows students how to take their personal experiences, musical influences, and models, and execute the different components in a manner that is unique to the singer and performer's own personal expression. Because, you know, if you're going to be a good singer, you have to bring your own personality 
into what you're doing. So, uh, like I said, I think that it was a well-attended event, and I think a lot of folks really enjoyed themselves. But I have a question to you, and that is what is going on with this whole Starbucks thing? That's up in your neck of the woods. So I uh, understand, you know, folks who are just <laughs> minding their own business, coming to have a meeting. I uh, understand that they were coming to meet with somebody for a business deal, and they were, you know, carted off by the uh, – um, police and everything, because yes. I guess they were loitering or something. Well, they had gotten there, and also another part they have added to that story is that one. I guess one of the gentlemen asked to use the restroom, and they were told no, so they sat down, and they were waiting for the other person to come meet with them. They were asked to leave because they hadn't purchased anything, and then when they refused to do so, the police were called. So after that, you know, that's when it kind of took off from there. I guess the police were like, hey, look, you know, you all have to go. And they were like, well, no, because we're waiting for our, our friends. So they ended up getting handcuffed. They were not charged because no crime had taken place. However, um, one of the patrons in the Starbucks posted it because it was like, hey, you know, I come in here and sit for hours at a time. Nobody says nothing to me. So why are they being treated that way? They had a boycott for the last couple of days at that Starbucks location to the point where the president of Starbucks is in Philadelphia. He wants to speak to those two gentlemen and apologize to them for what happened. Now, the one part is that that manager was let go. In my world, let go being fired. So, you know, we're still yep. trying to do some digging and find out exactly what let go actually means Because when you read it In the way that they word it Does that mean let go from that store And move to another one You know how a lot of times More is asked based on what it said But right now That store is actually Making no money because individuals I mean you had black folks White folks they all sitting in there protesting So you know If anybody was thinking about going Inside it's enough going on right outside the door. You know what? I'll go get me a soda. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even and, messing with that. And when I think about places like Starbucks, I mean, we've got a couple of those places around here, too, because we have some Starbucks in uh, the Durham area as well as around Raleigh and some of the other parts of North Carolina. And we also have regular just coffee shops. I'm thinking about one like Coco Cinnamon. It's a popular one here in the area. Or the BU, which is another popular one here. A lot of times, coffee shops wind up being people's, I mean, and, and I think a lot of times the business owners even know this. It winds up being almost like their second offices. So, you know, a lot of times people do not have an office in their house or their house might not be set up for an office. And you want to meet with different clients and you want to meet with different people. It's a common practice, in my opinion, for people to use those kind of businesses as their meeting spot. So I was really very confused when I heard that it was a Starbucks because, I mean, it's not like it's a, like a private restaurant. I don't know if it was a private restaurant or something that this is not the norm. Then you might have a you might have a more of an argument, but I, best I can tell, throughout the country, coffee shops are oftentimes people's second meeting spots. Mm-hmm. They do it all the time, and you yeah. for those who do go and and get coffee there, it's always somebody just sitting in there. Uh, they have a laptop. They have something, and and they're in there actually working or working on something. And right. sometimes you see them with, with cups, sometimes you don't. So, you know, for whatever reason, this manager decided to, you know, say, hey, look, you know, I run this, y'all got to get out. When they said no, they called the police. All right, well, common sense to me says if they wanted to use the bathroom, just let them use the damn bathroom. It's not that deep where... um they weren't trying to tear anything up. They weren't trying to be disrespectful. All they were doing was waiting for somebody. So That's now, it. that implies that you cannot wait in a, in a public space. Now, had they been in the in there loud, boisterous, and stuff like that, oh, okay, I can see you asking them to leave. But if they're just sitting there minding their own business, what real reason do you have? to ask them to leave, you know. Um, I don't drink coffee, so 
Starbucks never got a dime of my money to start with. But, but you know, for those who do drink coffee, you may want to check some other alternatives. Who's next? You know, first up, you're black men. Now, what's next? You're going to uh, turn your attention to another group and, and try to treat them the same? Or, you know, sometimes it just gets out of hand, and I wonder what goes through people's minds when you say, you know what? I'm going to call the police on you. Well, what did they do? Nothing. They just won't leave. Are you serious? Like, yeah. you got to be dumb, stupid, or a combination of the two. Because it doesn't make, it make logical sense. Made no sense to me whatsoever that they would do that. So I'm sitting there going, like, if they could, somebody can explain this to me, and maybe they do several other things in other parts of the country. Maybe these people that are listening have had these kind of run ins. But I know I'm like you. I'm not a big coffee drinker, and I've got family members that are definitely very much into coffees, including some of the gourmet coffees. But it's not my thing. But I do go to coffee shops because, you know, they have other things other than coffee there. Sometimes they have a nice little breakfast combination. Sometimes they have one of my weaknesses, iced tea or some other form of tea. So they have other alternatives other than coffee. So, And like I said, it's a great meeting location, and it's usually – and a convenient, it's usually located someplace convenient, you know, near a university, near a downtown area, someplace that's going to be convenient for both parties to get to. So I don't think that it's going to stop a lot of the uh, up-and-coming entrepreneurs from using it as one of their stops. So I uh, definitely do not understand why Starbucks would go out on a limb like that, messing with people, knowing that this is one of their regular locations that people use on a regular basis to conduct business meetings at. Well, you know what? They're going to soon learn. And I guess oh, that yeah. manager, if that manager was indeed released from employment, uh, I guess you're thinking now, damn, maybe I should have done this or maybe I should have done that. But it's too late. So now, you know what? You're just stuck. Oh, well. Now, to now they've got to sit there and try to figure out what they're going to do. For their next job opportunity, because they have apparently possibly lost this job, so now they got to try to figure out what kind of work they're going to do and where they're going to have their next job opportunity at. And, uh, you know, speaking of things going on in the world, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Comey was all in the news today because he has said something that we have all believed for a long time, which is that Trump is more to be unfit. <laughs> yeah, I wish he would have said that a little earlier. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you were so busy trying to sabotage this person and that person, and the person who you work directly with is, is horrible, you know, and, and it's just, I don't understand all of that. But well, before we even talk about that, I'm going to take a second and give a um, standing salute to a gentleman who today is his 80th birthday, and that would be my father. Sergeant First Class retired J.W. Pearson Jr. He's not listening to the show, but at the same time, he's the reason that I am here. So I wanted to wish him a happy 80th birthday. Um, wow. That, know, and that is a wonderful age. That a person can make it to oh, yeah. that kind of amazing age. And hopefully he will have many, many more birthdays to come because he definitely uh, has done a great job in raising you, and I'm sure does a good, great job in raising others as well. So uh, we definitely must give commendments to the great job that your father has done, and uh, who knows, maybe he'll be listening on, on another time since he was not listening this time. Yeah, I told him, he, I talked to him earlier, I said he's now moved into the grown folks section, you know. <laughs> he, he's now in the grown folks section, so, you know. But he definitely experienced stuff like this firsthand. Um, he was coming up, of course, during that time where they had to sit in with the Woolworth, uh, at the counters at Woolworth and all of that stuff. He lived through those things. And, and they say, it seems like I'm living through it all over again. And that's sad for this country to have a veteran who has achieved, well, beaten the life expectancy already, you know, for a black male, um, achieved 80 years, and it reminds him of the same BS that they went through firsthand during the civil rights movement and stuff like that. So, you know, you can try to smooth it over and say, I'm sorry, and have diversity this and 
uh, you know, interpersonal communications that, but you just, it, for those who follow that mindset, you're setting a precedent. You know, like, well, they did it. All they had to do was apologize. So where do we go from here? You know, 